you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello and welcome to Relax the Podcast. It's okay, it's right there. Relax is the podcast. We're so close. For those listening, we're attempting to throw basketballs behind our head. And for those listening, you may notice that that is not Colleen Ballinger. That is Rachel Ballinger, yes. Colleen's little sister. Wife swap. Oh, oh that means something different. <laughs> uh, I've, I've traded in the older Ballinger for the younger, younger uh, newer version. Oh, I, <laughs> still not good. No. <laughs> I'm Hi. subbing today. Yeah. How about that? Hi, Rachel. Thanks hey, for Eric. subbing today. You're welcome. welcome Thanks for to, having me. Uh, relax the podcast. As you know, your sister, um, her vocal cords are a mess. Yeah, they don't work well. Uh, and she's also in New York. Yeah. And so. Finally didn't have to cancel a show. Right. So, yeah. So are you prepared to have what is probably the longest conversation we've ever had? <laughs> <laughs> yep. No. <laughs> we talk. We, we talk. We talk. We exchange um, Christmas presents. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, that's. That's but we, the we, extent like, of our relationship. Yeah, but we don't have like long, deep conversations all the time. We haven't had a chance to. Yeah, busy with kids. Whenever we see each other, it's a massive family party yeah. and there's a bunch of kids running around. And Yeah, so this is kind of an awesome, interesting opportunity to get to do that. Yeah. Colleen I, just had to stop speaking and yeah. then we could become friends. Now we can talk. Um, I was thinking about one of the few, like many times, not maybe not many times that we've talked on the phone. Have we ever spoken on the phone? <laughs> what are you saying? One of the one times we talked on the phone. When Flynn was being born? That, yeah, we talked on the phone a few times. But one. <laughs> you remembering because I don't think I was there. But the longest time I think we've ever talked on the phone, which was probably five minutes, was me calling you asking, I think, your permission. Oh, that's right. Um, to propose Were you marriage asking? to your sister. Yes, you did call me. You did ask. Yeah, did I, you ask or did you just swear like I asked your permission kind of, but I also I also like gave you the low down low down on how I was planning yeah. on doing it. Yes. And kind of asking if it was a bad Yeah, you were idea. more being like, Hey, is this a good idea rather than like, are you gonna allow me to do this? Well it was kind of a mix of both. <laughs> yeah. Um You're like, Am I an idiot? I was like, No, I still love that, do it. Yeah. It was a pretty convoluted idea of how I had pieces of rings. Yes. That were not an entire ring. And I had vi like old family heirloom postcards and mm -hmm. photographs mm -hmm. and a whole spiel that I think I very incoherently <laughs> blabbed about to you. I, I understood the gist. And you sweetly approved. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And it worked out. Yeah, it did. And, and now we are uh, brother and sister-in-law. Yes. And we see each other on holidays. We do. And whenever I randomly show up to your house to so hang true. out with Colleen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want, I helped you move once. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Because I have a truck. You, yeah. You have a truck? Yeah. You still got that truck, right? Did we? Yeah. <laughs> um, and as a, a really good podcast host, uh -huh. I, of course, have this. I went to a bookstore oh, this week. Okay. And this is absolutely cool. real. What is this? This is a book called Podcasting for <laughs> Dummies. Did you? Did you learn anything? And I think that I qualify, especially. <laughs> uh, I learned so much. Really? But there's I, should, a, I should honestly read this it. This is the fourth edition, apparently. Um, but there's a whole chapter in here about um, interviews. Okay. Oh, so you're interviewing me. Uh, well, I guess. I don't know. This, I'm trying to be a good podcaster, but like, uh, and get, and get to know you in a way, uh, all you right. know, in a, di in a different way. So I did my, um, I did my research, uh -huh. of course, as any good podcast host does, yes. is he, he researches his guests yeah. before they come on. So I Googled you. You Googled me. Oh, there's yeah. some very wrong, interesting information on Google. And we're going to get to our relaxes, of course. Okay. If you have one. Uh, am I supposed to just say what's you can think what needs to relax? Yeah, I uh, feel like you'd be really good. I, I feel like you might have invented this because you wrote a book called <laughs> 101 Things That Piss Me Off." Yeah, so you yeah. might you might have some up your sleeve. Yeah, uh, I got we'll, 101 we'll up my sleeve. We'll get to those, but first, like, let's get to let's get to know you. Yeah, go for it. I okay. love this. Okay, so according to this website, uh, Fandom, you were born April 5th. This is correct. 1991. Yep, I am 32 years old, and I'm an Aries. I don't know what that means, but I am. Not. I think it says that also. Uh, you're an actress, comedian, well, blogger, and YouTuber. It, well, uh, the first one, I am not an actress by any means. I don't know. You uh, act. When? 
it, oh, I guess you can kind of be in yourself, but yeah, I am. I can like improv a little bit, but if you give me a script, I can't for the life of me. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever auditioned for anything or no. anything like that? I mean, I accidentally modeled once for what? When I was a kid, uh, Colleen was my sis, my mom took Colleen to some modeling auditions. Okay. Yeah. I think I've seen this. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. And they called my mom and they were like, yeah, we don't want Colleen. Her sister though was really cute. We need, we want her to do some stuff. So, so you got, <laughs> I got, you got like an agent. Uh, I was only like, like on a box of something, right? Yeah, On a sunglasses and sunscreen for kids. And I, I did it and I hated it. And I was like, I don't want to do this. Cause they made me wear a dress. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And my mom was like, come on, you could make some money for the family. And I was were like, you, oh, I don't want to do this. Were I did you, it once. Give me my toy truck. I'm done. How much were you paid? I don't know. It was probably a few hundred bucks, but my mom let me pick out any toy I wanted at Rite Aid for doing it. Would so you, I got a Jeep with that had a, a trailer attached that towed two jet skis on it. They still have that there. I'm sure it's they still do. the it's still the only toy they have at Rite Aid. Is, that, sure is, is the is the Jeep pulling a jet ski? That's so funny. It's literally the only toy they have. I mean, have you bought it for Flynn? It's, it's a good one. In like like a frozen like bowling set. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I like those bowling sets. My fingers don't fit in them anymore, but they're fun. Yeah, because the kids think it's a toy store. So when you go there, you have to go to the the toy aisle. But that's literally all they have. Yes. Jet ski Jeep. I mean, I personally like they have they have like an as seen on TV section, like toys for adults. But that's it. No, like adult I'm not funny. I'm not flushing. That is it. That's great. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, that section. I haven't been in that section in a while. That's a really good. It has like the, the green nonstick pans. Yeah, and like, like copper things the, yeah, that make things stuff. not hurt. Mm-hmm. A head scratcher, compression perhaps. socks. Yeah, yeah. What it's do those fun. do? I, it has to do with circulation. If you have bad circulation, it's or you swell, like flying right. Yeah, like people swell or something. I don't know. Don't ask us. I have good blood pressure. Oh, funny. It says trivia. The number two thing is she was featured as a child model Ah. in a sunglasses ad when she was very young. Done. Look at that. The internet knows things. Um, Apparently I've told the story one too many times. If, if, yeah, stop me, I guess, if they're, if we're going over things that people already well, know. I but, know. Maybe, but I don't know. If you weren't a YouTuber, you would be a dog trainer or a furniture maker? Uh, furniture maker, yeah. Dog trainer, not so much anymore. I'm tired. But a furniture maker, yeah. I like carpentry. I like carpentry, too. It's fun. I wish I knew more about it. I think you have to be better at math than I am. Yeah, you got to like be able to like, ing- like be an engineer, sort of. Like, understand. Yeah how things work i don't i just like slap things together yeah i'm like this looks cool i I make things out of pallets yeah i'm like don't trust the structural structural integrity but you can look at it it says here you're (laughs) sorry if i keep looking down it's because i'm looking at i know you're looking at i can see you your your net worth is oh please i want to see if it's in the ballpark a billion dollars no i wish i'd be a terrible person i think Billionaires are evil people. Yeah. If you get to a billion dollars, you you're doing something a little you, bit. Yeah, you're uh, crooked. Yeah, you're not a good person. I think. Yeah, you don't need that much you money. Don't. You're greedy, and you should be either giving some away or paying your employees better, or doing something. But any if you've done something wrong to get to that billion. Yeah. Strike. I'm not a billionaire. Uh, what do you think it says? You're not worth this. Um, six hundred thousand. More. Three million. Less. I don't know. One point two. I actually don't know my net worth. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Really, <laughs> where, I don't know really know how they. Um, like if I liquidated all my assets and everything, how much money I would have? Is that what my net net worth I is? I think so. Yeah, liquidated assets. Sure. Mm, that sounds if like you a. You sold your um, Peloton. If I, sold, how much I you'd don't be have worth. one of those. It says your religion is Christian. Um, I don't have a religion. It says. You graduated college. <laughs> this might be <laughs> the most fascinating interview anyone's ever had. <laughs> so this is why Eric and I don't converse. <laughs> it's going great. Um, again, this one also says you're an actress. It includes lots of pictures I, of you. I think people don't understand that. This doesn't have your current relationship status, though. Oh. I'm in a relationship. That's my current relationship status. It says here. Oh, okay, this is interesting. I hmm. don't know who wrote who writes it. Wiki feed. 
Uh, f- there's a section called physical appearance. Oh, can please. I read it to you? Please. Rachel me. Ballinger is a beautiful, beautiful looking, hot and gorgeous girl with an attractive and charming personality. What? She owns a hot, sizzling and curvaceous figure with attractive body measurements and a beauty, beautifully, I'm sorry, this, this is embarrassing for you, <laughs> and beautifully to... shaped slim body type. No. Her figure measurements are 34, 28, 40. Wait, what? Okay, first, you can't say slim and curvaceous as this in the same definition of a of a person's body. Not not only the same definition. This was the same sentence. Oh, this, this person. This is a run on sentence. She owns a hot, <laughs> sizzling, and curvaceous figure they, with attractive body measurements and a beautifully shaped, slim body type. Okay, but I also said physical appearance, and then started talking about my charming personality. I think this person was like halfway through objectifying me was like, oh, I have to talk about her personality. <laughs> she is five seven in height. No, I'm not. I'm five ten and a quarter. She's beautiful blonde, color long, and shiny hair. And would also you call has, me blonde? I'm a natural brunette. I would call you blonde, color long, and shiny hair. <laughs> and also has blistering dark brown color, beautiful, and mesmerizing eyes. Wait, what color am I? My Your color, blistering dark brown, eye color blonde. Eye color, my eye color is, I call Maisel. It's might be hazel. Maisel? Oh, I get it. <laughs> Wait, do I? Might and hazel. Oh, I've shipped. Okay. I've shipped the words. I get it. I feel like we know you now, right? Is you that pretty me. much the gist? I have a, a slim, curvaceous blistering. body. Blistering. What is it? Something. So, I have blonde eyes. Slim, that one I don't get. Blonde eyes. Blistering brown hair. I got, and see, I got all this from this podcasting for dummies book. So yeah, I mean, it's available apparently at bookstores near you. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that you're you're being a great <laughs> podcast host. Um, yeah, but that's kind of it in this book. It's more like technical, like what equipment oh. you need, how to work with puppets. Puppets? Why do you there need a, a puppet? Whole, I don't know. Who podcasts with puppets? I don't know. I, I don't know who this book is for. And then it talks about the graphic for that you would like thumbnail you would use on podcast sites and. I, dude, if you think I'm listening How past puppets, I need to know why there's puppets. I just saw a page and there was a picture of a guy with a puppet. I really, I haven't read the book. <laughs> I, ma- I made up the whole thing about um, the interviews. But let's, if, you, if you, we were like. You bought a prop is yeah, what you did. essentially bought a prop. <laughs> I'll, right. look, I'll look at it later. Um, but maybe some like, like first date type questions that I don't know about you. Like, what's your favorite movie? Okay, let's act like we're on a first date. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Why did you, why did you physically move? You said that. To look at you. Oh, okay. I'm on a date. I didn't I'm know not you were going to ask me like, hold your, your hands. Like, it looked like you are going to say, let's hold hands or something, which you wouldn't do on no. a first date. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Well. What's your, what's your favorite movie? Um, <laughs> I'm really bad at first dates. I don't have one. <laughs> you don't have a favorite movie? I don't like movies. Oh, you're just so, like your sister. Yeah. Because, well, my thing is, it's not that I can't pay attention. My sister can't t- pay attention. Okay. But for me, it's it's not enough time for me to get emotionally invested into a character. Okay. So I like to binge watch long TV show series because I can get like invested and mm-hmm. then it's like worth my time. With totally a movie. Totally agree. By the movie. Also, movies are like, so you know what's going to happen because you have, oh, it looks fun. Then there's a problem. How are we going to solve it? It's solved. Kiss and make up. And so it's changed. It's changed because right now I love TV and like limited series way more than I like movies Mm -hmm. these days. But in my college years, at one point I was a film major and I loved, I loved movies and I feel like they were good up until a point. They were, I mean, maybe they, there are fewer, fewer and far between now, but like, I think we've done all the ideas. Yeah. Do you want to know my favorite movies? Yeah. I have three that are like tied. Oh, wow. Let's see if you've seen any. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. I've seen that. Did you like it? I don't remember as a kid. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but you know that you've seen it. I know that I've seen it. I sat down. I remember watching um, it. That movie kind of made me want to be an actor. I also really? saw it. Yeah. I saw what about the, it? Just uh, that main character and the portrayal of it by Jack okay. Nicholson. I don't know. Just something about it was like so cool. A lot, of, right. a lot of guys, when you ask them what made them want to be an actor, they always say Titanic. Is that weird? Dica- what? DiCaprio and Titanic. Really? Yeah. I've heard that a lot. I would have not never me. guessed that. Nicholson and One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. Another favorite movie, Magnolia. You ever seen that? I do not know what that is. 
What is it? You should check that out because it's kind of like a miniseries because so much happens in it and there's so many characters. Okay. It's by Paul Thomas Anderson who did like Boogie Nights and There Will Be Blood. I don't know any of the words you're saying to me. Okay. Um, (laughs) Royal Tenenbaums. That would be the other one. I know that that's a movie and I'm pretty sure I've seen it. Wes Anderson. That's a really good movie too. Uh, Okay. Do you have a TV show that's your favorite right now? Um, Right now, I just finished watching The Jury. Yeah, we watched that. That was funny. It was really entertaining. And yeah. I, do you think they'll ever be able to do something like that again? No, they'll never find somebody as nice as that guy. Yeah. I think, I assume. Yes. What they showed, he seemed just like the most genuine, nice. Yeah. It was so sweet to see someone in that situation, this kind of like, what would you call it? Like punked reality situation be nice and yeah. supportive and sweet to strangers. Yeah. I was a little confused at the end. I didn't like the reveal at the end that they did. And then they're like, and now you have a hundred thousand dollars. It was so bizarre because yeah. I was like, I think they thought the whole series out really well on like how they were going to do everything. Like they had to be able to take away his phone. Mm-hmm. And so the only time you can do that is in a jury, like a sequestered jury. Like you have to smart. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I was like, oh, they really thought there's about everything. a lot of details that were really good. Like there wasn't this huge murder case. There was yeah. just kind of mundane and yeah. But the only thing at the end of the big reveal, I was like, I felt like that was weird. I didn't like it. I felt bad for him. I, yeah. felt, I felt like it was a bit, I mean, I'm sure he's stoked now, but it seemed in the moment like a bit of a betrayal. The, the mm-hmm. one thing that I didn't like about it was that they had interviews with the rest of the cast talking to camera, like talking head interviews yeah. where they were still in character. Yeah. And that t- totally t- took me out of it. I'm like, what is, what do you mean by this? Am I, I'm, I'm watching the show. I'm in yeah. on the joke. Am I supposed, is my, how, bi- how much is my suspension of disbelief supposed, supposed to be yes. that I also now am believing these to be real people that you're in? It just seemed like I would rather hear from them as the actor. Yes. I see why they did it when he was around maybe, but yeah, like, like when he wasn't around. Interviews. Yeah. It was a bit strange. Yeah. I had it the same was thing. Jarring. I was like, I wanted to know what they were thinking during those scenes. Yeah. It would. Yeah. Instead of like, I guess they saved that for the end. So maybe that was their. I don't know. But yeah, like they went and they would film things when he wasn't even around, like the soaking scene. They went and filmed that. He wasn't even. Oh my God. I can't believe that's re- that's a real thing. Yeah. Blew it's my a... mind. Yeah, it's real. Your sister like knew all about it. She's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, it's real. I saw a documentary. Yeah. Oh, I just saw it on TikTok. <laughs> Maybe it was TikTok. I think she thinks TikTok is documentaries. It's just like short little 30 second documentaries. <laughs> I guess, I guess it kind of is. They keep her attention. <laughs> Do you have a favorite food? Um. So back when I ate uh, meat and cheese, it was pizza. Uh-huh. P- you can't go wrong with pizza. Pizza is great. Pizza is delicious. Do I you ever eat- have New Haven pizza? No. It's the best pizza in the world. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, why? What makes it, it so good? Uh, a lot of people say it has to do with like the water that they use in the dough, but it's also ah. this like, maybe like the thin crust brick oven style is kind okay. of like, like, but like three of like nationally ranked of the top five best pizza places in the country are all in New Haven. Really? And I grew up there. So like, I'm, like I'm telling you, it's the best. I'll, I'll go there and I'll try a people slice. People always say New York. No, New Haven pizza is better. Really? Yeah. Wow. Gosh, um, maybe that would be... My favorite food. Thanks for asking. Um, You're welcome. Well, <laughs> I had part two of the oh, answer, sorry. but the, ca- the <laughs> chemistry didn't listen, is so alive. That's fine. <laughs> it might be on. that I'm pizza, and then what else? Well, I can't remember. Look at us. We, we really are sync. We just you, if you can't see, we just crossed our legs at the exact same time into the exact same way. Um. Okay. You tell me your favorite. Eggs Benedict. Really? I think so. That I've never heard like, someone say is like their last, favorite. Last meal, like death row last meal. I think I'm, yeah. Really? Okay. Like I've been really into ramen lately. Okay. But like the kind you make at home. Like cup of noodles ramen? Don't put it in a cup. That's gross. I don't, that one's cardboard. Like right. the, the, the bricks. The classic bricks? The classic bricks. Your sister eats those raw. Is that a thing? Um, It's a thing for us. We used to do that as kids all the time. Why? Um. Because couldn't we, we could water. <laughs> <laughs> the gas got cut off at the house. I don't know. Um, well, well, yeah, we didn't cook. Yeah. <laughs> That's considered cooking. You're just like, <laughs> it's, it's very Oliver Twist of you guys. Yeah. I just imagine you like on the ground and like dirty. <laughs> we would be in a tree house. Outfits. Yeah. In a tree house. <laughs> we, we'd Eating either smush ramen. it up. We'd smush it up and then like pour it in our mouths or we just eat it like a brick. That sounds... <laughs> Real gross. I don't know. It sounds, uh, it sounds inedible. It no, it was edible. It wasn't good for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm gonna switch. The fact that I've been into Robin a lot is, you know, a new thing. But my go-to is just sushi. Mm-hmm. Love sushi. I'm currently trying to get into wasabi. What's a good roll? Um, What's well, your go-to roll? Rainbow roll. Rainbow roll is my go-to. Okay. 
because it's just simple. So you're a pescatarian? Uh, I'm a dairy-free pescatarian. Okay. I made it up. It's my own thing. You I can, like it. You can what? What's partake. wrong with that? Do your own thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm saying it's my own thing. Like, there's no name for it. I'm not a... Rainbow Rose good, yeah. Yeah. I uh, also like if there's... getting into wasabi, meaning you're, you've been scared of it in the past? I'm not scared of it. I think it tastes like dirty dish soap. Oh, so you guys, you guys do that thing where you tell... You tell people <laughs> what you think the things taste like, and it's always horrible. And then it puts it in my brain. And I then tell you facts. Now when I eat it, it'll taste like dirty. Next time I have it, I'm sure it'll taste like that. Yeah, just because you said it. No, because that's what wasabi. it is. Okay. I'm glad you like wasabi. I want to like wasabi because we go and do like uh, omakase a lot where like the chef just makes us whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just normal sushi, just like rice and fish on top, like okay. no rolls. And they always put wasabi in it. And I'm always like this. On top of it? Like in, uh, it's between the rice and the fish. Oh yeah. So in order to take the wasabi out, I have to peel off no, the fish and I don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm in not going to make a In front of the chef. Cause yeah. he's right there. Yeah. I know. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm not a psycho. So I have to eat it and then I don't like it. I'm one of those eager sushi people to when like you order and then you're there and you have this soy sauce dish and you have the wasabi and the chopsticks, but they haven't brought the food out yet. You prepare it. I like, I take the chopsticks and I take a little bit of the wasabi and then I smash it up in the soy sauce mm -hmm. and I mix it all around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I prepare my chopsticks and I pour my, my sauce. Yeah. I get everything ready. So when it comes, I can just eat it. Right. And Abby, my girlfriend just sits there and waits and then takes my chopsticks because they're already out. And then oh, I have yeah. to prepare hers as well. That's pretty, that's pretty smart. She doesn't even realize she's doing it. She doesn't? It's like or subconscious? she does. Yeah, subconscious. <laughs> she's just like, I need chopsticks. Oh, these ones are available. I see them. It's, I don't know. All right. So those are our favorite foods. Yep. Okay. What other, what other, I feel like uh, we should, I need to say thanks to uh, my first sponsor. Oh, fun. Be right back. Hey, hey, everyone. I bet you weren't expecting to hear my voice doing the ads this week. I am so upset that I am not with Eric and Rachel right now uh, recording the podcast. It sounds like it's probably going to be so fun, and I'm major having FOMO not being there. But I am here today to read some wonderful uh, sponsorships for you. So let's get started with the first sponsor of the day, which is Ritual. Okay, so listen, guys, this is kind of a weird question, but maybe it's not. Maybe you guys can relate. Have you ever bailed on going to a party or going out with friends or going to do something because you're like super bloated and you're like, I don't want to have to wear like normal people pants. I just only want to wear sweatpants because I feel bloated. And I don't want to go anywhere. Well, hey, there's no shame in that. I, I feel like that very often. And here's the deal. Ritual's got your back because they literally created Symbionic Plus with that weird gut stuff in mind. It contains clinically studied prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome, y'all. Hello. We love Ritual in our house and it has helped us so much in situations like this where we're just feeling bloated and kind of yuck town USA. Symbiotic Plus has been such a help in those moments so you don't feel like you have to wear sweatpants. You can just, you know, actually wear the pants that you want to wear. Or you can wear sweatpants. Either way, you just will feel less bloated. You know, I still want to wear sweatpants even if I'm not bloated. So, hey -o. Anyway, um, it's wonderful. If you guys want to check it out, I can tell you more about it. They have a daily three-in-one prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic, like I said earlier, with two of the world's most clinically studied probiotic strains to support the relief of mild and occasional bloating, gas, and diarrhea, which y'all know I am too close of a friend to that last one there. So <laughs> I love me some ritual, okay? Anyway, um, why would you want to include a postbiotic, you might ask? I'd never heard of a postbiotic until Ritual, actually. Um, well, let me tell you, it provides fuel to the cells that make up the gut lining and supports a healthy gut barrier. So it's a win-win. It's pretty awesome. The delayed release capsule designed, is designed to help survive the harsh conditions of the upper GI tract for delivery to the colon, an ideal place for probiotics to grow and thrive. Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide, your insides. There's no more shame in your gut game. That's why Ritual is offering our listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash relax to start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. Go check it out, ritual.com slash relax. Hello, everybody. It's me, Colleen. Um, I'm all by myself, and I'm jumping in here on this episode of the podcast. I know that Eric and my sister have been podcasting, so I don't know where this is going to go in the episode. I'm assuming at the end portion, maybe. 
I don't know, maybe in the middle and get crazy. I don't know where this is going to go in the episode. I also have no idea what they talked about. And I'm having a little bit of FOMO um, that they are doing a podcast without me. And I don't know what's going on. So um, hopefully you guys have been fun. You guys have been fun. You guys have been having fun listening to them. I'm currently in New York City. I just saw Sweeney Todd on Broadway. It was incredible. I had a show last night in Huntington, New York, and it was wonderful. It was so much fun. I had a total blast. Um, And I really feel like I needed that because the night before, I was supposed to have a show in Philly and I couldn't make it because of travel drama. It was a total mess. And I was devastated um, to have to reschedule the show and to, you know, I have so many people changed their lives and their schedules around to get to my shows. And I like feel like I ruined so many people's day. And I was devastated about that. I was devastated just because when travel stuff goes wrong, it's just exhausting and awful. And we were stuck in the Denver area for literally over 24 hours. Um, and it just sucked. And also, I felt like I had to be away from my kids for no reason because I didn't even get to perform. So that was a bummer. And then we had a great show in Huntington. It was super, super fun. And now I'm in New York City and I go back home bright and early in the morning. Um, So Eric was so kind as to invite Rachel over to do the podcast um, with him so that uh, I didn't have to like worry about it while I was on my trip. But then I was like, oh, I don't mind. So I am I was like, I'll do a segment. You guys can do segments. We'll, we'll do whatever. We can split it up. But I feel like they're more entertaining than me, honestly. So um, I hope you're not just turning off the podcast now that it's just me on here. But anyway, um, I wanted to talk about something crazy that happened tonight. So I went and I saw Sweeney Todd and it was absolutely incredible, like literally so amazing. And I won't bore you all with how obsessed I was with that production. But if you want to know how obsessed I was, I'm going to talk about it in my vlog so you can go watch that. But like I was obsessed. Now, here's the deal. Um, The incredible Annalie Ashford is playing Mrs. Lovett in that show. She is a brilliant actress. um, Absolutely amazing. I love her. I've loved her for years. And back in the day, in the beginning days of my Miranda Sings career, I actually performed with her because I used to always um, reach out to Broadway performers when I lived in New York City and when I was here all the time performing as Miranda at the beginning of my career. I'm talking like 14 years ago timeline, like a long time ago. Um, I would always reach out to Broadway performers to be in my shows because I thought no one would buy tickets to see just me. So I was like, the only way I can get people to come to my shows is if I get famous people to be in the shows with me. And um, it worked and it was fun because I got to meet all these people that I really idolized and looked up to. And I got to give them voice lessons on stage as Miranda or sing duets with them on stage as Miranda and um, be super rude to them, which was terrifying, but also um, pretty fun. So anyway, I have a lot of crazy stories from that time in my life. But Annalie Ashford um, at the time, she was, I think she was in Kinky Boots at the time. I think, maybe, maybe I just made that up. I know that I eventually saw her in Kinky Boots. I don't know if I saw her at before or after I did the Miranda show with her. But anyway, she was in Kinky Boots and that was the first time I ever saw her perform and I was blown away because in Kinky Boots, her role, her role had like one song and I swear to you, she stole the show, the production that I saw here in New York City. Like she was so freaking good. Anyway, she came and did my show with me um, at Birdland Jazz Club here in New York City. And um, she sang If Mama Was Married with me from Gypsy. And I think Gypsy was on Broadway at the time or had just, the revival had just happened or something. I don't remember. But anyway, um, we sang that song together. She's lovely, the sweetest. She's just amazing. Wonderful. This was in 2010. So this is 13 years ago. She's now playing Mrs. Lovett in Sweeney Todd. Now, side note, side story. Um, there is a photo from the night of my Miranda Sings show that actually went viral like a year ago or something like that because it's the most crazy picture ever. It's a photo of me and I'm with Annalie Ashford, Megan Hilty, Stephanie J. Block, and Ariana Grande. And so it's like Miranda, and it's me as Miranda Sings. And somehow that picture went viral, like, and people are like, what is this photo? Why are these women together? This is the most random assortment of women. What are they doing together? What is this photo from? And um, it was just spreading somehow online. Megan Hilty made like a TikTok about it, and I, I think I made a TikTok about it too. I was just explaining that it was a Miranda show and I used to ask people to come perform. Um, So Stephanie J. Block and Megan Hilty were there to watch the show. Annalie Ashford and Ariana were in the show with me, performing with me. Um, So anyway, uh, 
that's that. So anyway, so tonight, I, or today, I guess, I saw the matinee. I saw Annalie Ashford in Sweeney Todd. This woman was brilliant, like unbelievable brilliant. And I have been hearing how wonderful she is, and I didn't doubt it because I've seen her perform before, and I've always thought she was brilliant. And basically, like, if you think you don't know who Annalie Ashford is, first of all, what? Second of all, you've definitely seen her in something. Because she's like, I swear she's on every TV show. I've seen her every time I'm watching television, which is rare. But I feel like she pops up on the screen. And she's brilliant. And she steals the scene. Like, she's she's in everything. Anyway, um, she was amazing. And so at intermission, I text my friend Jim. And I was like, hey, I'm in New York. Do you want to get a late dinner? I'm seeing Sweeney right now. And um, he was like, oh, my gosh, you were um, you tell Annalie I say hi or something and sent me the picture of me and Annalie Ashford together at my Miranda show from 2010, literally 13 years ago. And I was like, oh, my God, I should send this to her and be like, remember me? Because I haven't spoken to her since then. And um, so I was joking. And then he was like, I'll do it. And then I didn't respond because I was then watching the second act. And then once the show over, I turned my phone back on and Jim had texted me, hey, Annalise said to stay and so you can say hi. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's great. So I was really excited. I got to see her and say hi and take a picture with her again. But here's the crazy story, okay? So she comes out and she's talking to other people that she knows and saying hi. And, you know, I'm kind of standing on the side. I didn't want to bother her or take up her time with her other people because like, I literally haven't talked to her in 13 years and I'm sure these are like loved ones that she needs to spend lots of time with. So I'm trying to stay out of the way and like, you know, whatever. Anyway, so then she <laughs> finishes talking to these lovely two women and one of them turns to me and hands me their phone and says, hey, can you take a picture of us? And I was like, yeah, of course. Oh my gosh, sure. So I pick up the camera and I'm like trying to like angle it and you know, whatever and take a couple photos. And I, one of the women says something to me and I couldn't really understand her. And I was like, what? And she said, above the chin, please. And I was like, what? And she goes, above the chin, take it above the chin. And I was like, oh. And right after she said that, I realized it was a very famous person. <laughs> I feel like I don't know if I should say who it is or not, because I don't want to like expose that she was at the show or whatever. I don't know. But I don't think it matters. Um, basically, I'm, all I'm going to say is girls just want to have fun. OK? Girls just want to have fun fun okay so that should tell you who this iconic iconic incredible amazing human being was and it makes sense that she was there obviously she knows Annalie because kinky boots if you know you know um kinky boots the music is wonderful music in kinky boots you know girls just want to have fun kind of good music so anyway I realize it's this wonderful iconic incredible epic human being standing in front of me asking me she was like above the chin please and I was like oh that I okay and then I got nervous and so I put the phone really high and she's like you don't have to go that high and I was like I'm sorry and then I got I got I was so nervous because I was like oh my god this is this incredible woman um I mean obviously I'm talking about Cindy Lauper um anyway so I was like oh my god I've like I've, I've then I was like now that I, there was so much pressure I was like I have to take a good picture of Cindy, Cindy Lauper is in this photo like I I have to take a good one um so I don't know if I ruined her photo for her or not, but she did make me very nervous because she is obviously a legend and an icon and she was very nice. Um, but I was, you know, all she said to me was above the chin, please. But she was very sweet. And I just felt bad that I didn't, I wasn't angling the photo exactly how she would have liked it. I'm sure. I, I don't know. I took a lot of pictures. I hope one of them was good for her, but she was very, very nice to me and very grateful and, and just wonderful. And she's an icon and a legend. And um, anyway, so that happened. And then I got to... Um, talk to Annalie and to hang out with Annalie and for a second and tell her how brilliant and wonderful she is. And we took a picture recreating the photo that we had taken in 2010 um, where we just, you know, by recreating it, I mean, we just took a picture together and I did the Miranda smile because I wanted to put them next to each other. But then once I put the photos next to each other, I realized that I was wearing stripes because as Miranda, I used to wear a button down like striped shirt all the time instead of the cat shirt. And she was wearing like this white cute like blouse that was all poofy and youth, youthful and cute because she was we were doing gypsy a song from gypsy and she was playing you know a little girl essentially in that song so this time we took the picture and i was wearing stripes and she was wearing a white shirt i was like it looks like we planned to recreate this photo but she had no idea i was there until the intermission 
Um, and I certainly did not think I was going to take a picture with her because I didn't have a way of contacting her and I, w- I wasn't going to wait at the stage door because um, I just felt like awkward and weird and I just felt too awkward doing that tonight. So um, I, yeah, anyway, she was lovely. The whole cast was wonderful. It was an, an amazing experience. And um, I got to have that really funny and cute interaction with an icon. So I'm going to head out, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this wonderful episode with my hot awesome husband and my sister i'm very excited to hear whatever they talked about and um i hope you guys enjoyed it and i i know that i will enjoy i can't wait to listen to it and i hope you enjoyed my little story time um but i will see you guys next week bye bye this episode of relax is brought to you by the mcdonald's app you guys i'm so freaking excited i can talk for this episode you don't know how devastated i was when i found out we were sponsored by mcdonald's while i was on vocal rest that was brutal to know that my beloved mcdonald's was sponsoring my podcast and i could not speak from my vocal cords i did order mcdonald's that night Uh, because I was so excited and I ate it, but I couldn't talk about it. And it was just very sad. Anyway, I'm very excited to do the sponsorship today. Uh, So guys, here's the deal. My newest life hack is the McDonald's app. Are you using it? Hello, because you should be. It's amazing. Seriously, you just go into the app and then you pick your favorite location. You can select curbside or counter and then you can head to that McDonald's and grab your food super fast. It's way faster. It's way easier than anything else. They prep it while you're on the way there. It's like VIP. It's like a VIP experience. It's like you feel like the fanciest person in the world. You just show up and it's like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm here to pick up my order. And it's like already ready for you. You don't have to wait in line or anything. It's, it's incredible. So if you want McDonald's for lunch, but you don't want to deal with the lunch rush, you can just download the McDonald's app, order ahead, pick it up, go get it. It's, it is very amazing. Okay. I am. I really hate waiting in lines because I'm a very impatient person. We know this. I am not a patient person. So for me, the fact that now I can skip the line is magical. I can just show up and just get my food right away. It's everything. So I have a question for you guys. What are you going to do with all of the saved time you have now that you're going to order in the app? Hmm? Tell me this. Riddle me this because I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend more time with my kids. I'm going to spend more time relaxing. Oh my gosh. It's going to free up so much time. The amount of time that I've spent in that drive through guys, now I don't have to anymore. It's amazing. So order ahead in the app to save time. Prep while you're on the way excludes drive through at participating McDonald's. And we're back. Hello. Thanks, uh, sponsor. Uh, we, um... <laughs> I'm, this is awesome. I'm having so much fun. Like truly. (laughs) I feel like I know you better already. And it's just like kind of the beginning. I Um, love this. Should we have a second date? Yeah. Okay. So on our second date, what I would bring up is this BuzzFeed article (laughs) I found about lesbians. Dang it. You realized I was a lesbian on our date. (laughs) Um, And it's called 10 myths about, wait, no, that's not what it's called. It's called 18 facts. Every lesbian knows to be a hundred percent. Okay. True. All right. Um, now I've known lesbians. I have um, lesbians in my extended family. Okay. Um, but I've never gotten to really ask them these questions. Our, from I'm an this open book. B- very specific BuzzFeed article. I have to say, I've only been out three years. Okay. You were one of the first people I came out to. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I go, huh? <laughs> yeah, I assume Colleen had told you and she hadn't because Colleen would never out somebody. Yeah. And so like I just mentioned that I was going on a date with Abby and you're like, ah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought it was yeah. totally, I, well, I thought it was totally awesome. Yeah. And uh, it, it wasn't exactly, I wasn't exactly that surprprised. No one was except me. Uh-huh. <laughs> but then actually once I realized I was gay, I was like, actually I'm not surprised. <laughs> this is fine. But at first you were surprised? I was, I think I was surprised that I didn't figure it out sooner. Uh huh. Yeah. But yeah, no one was surprised. See, we wouldn't have this conversation if we weren't. <laughs> no, <laughs> we weren't doing this. Maybe we should start our own podcast just okay. so that we you ex- actually have conversations. I love that. I'll do All it. Right. Sweet. Or we can do that when I come on yours. Oh, yeah. Um, I have two podcasts. Eric's going to come on one of them. Um, Rachel Ballinger. Eric Stockland. What is a U-Haul lesbian? Oh, so U-Haul lesbians, um, we immediately just move in together. That's what that means? Yeah. So like Abby and I were basically a U-Haul. We moved in together, uh, I think at our eight month mark, but she was basically already living with me. That's, that's a clever term for it. It's yeah. like good terminology. Yeah. I would, I wouldn't have guessed. I yeah. was like, what's a U-Haul? It's cause it says U-Haul lesbians are not just a mythical stereotype. Oh, that's real. We immediately moved in together. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I feel like there can be like, 
U-Haul heteros too, though. Yeah, but Pretty, usually, maybe it's but certainly less common. It's less common, and I, it is way more common if like lesbians are dating to just start living together than not. Okay. Like we just immediately just go That's for what, it. That's ha- what happens. We yeah, we're just like, okay, well, I like you. I want to spend all my time with you. And they're like, yeah, same. Why are we paying two rents when right. we could just be paying one? How how long uh, were you were you dating before you moved in together? Well, Did you say that? I bought us a house uh-huh. at eight months, but she was, I want to say, at my living at my house like ninety percent of the time before that, uh-huh. and that was right after we met. She was just at my house because she had roommates in her apartment. Yeah, yeah. With a, it was a small apartment with roommates. Oh, it totally makes one sense bathroom, to me. And I owned my own house with multiple bathrooms, multiple rooms. Yeah. And she is she'd never been with someone who had their own house before. So she's like, well, I love this freedom. Right. And you have a backyard that my dog can play in. Yeah. It's like, yeah, come on over. Right. And never leave. I just slowly bought her a dresser. OK. Made room. I gave her the other sink in the bathroom. Uh huh. She brought over her stuffed animal to sleep with. <laughs> And then that was it. And then that was, that's, that's all she had. <laughs> yeah. Got rid of everything Poor else. Abby. She's the best. Um, the six degrees of separation rule doesn't apply to lesbians. It's three degrees of separation if you're lucky. Um, oh, someone knowing your ex? Then it goes, this is a BuzzFeed article, mind you. Then it, it, then there's a, a GIF that is not playing because of my okay. Wi-Fi. And, the, and then it, the, it only elaborates to say, even if you're from Scotland and you meet a lesbian from Guatemala, she still would have dated your ex's ex. It's Leza Law. Oh, everyone has dated each other, basically, is what that means. So if I went and met a lesbian in like WeHo or something... Somehow we could trace back to like, like six degrees of Kevin, Kevin Bacon or whatever. Like somebody would have dated somebody yes. that, you know, or yes. had dated. Yes, exactly. That, you find that to be true. Um, yeah, I, yes. Uh, yes. I somehow, I think like within someone your friends or community within the friends or community. I will, yes. Someone would have known someone at least. Fascinating. What tangled webs we, Oh yeah. These it's, lesbians weave. It's also a common thing that like the exes are at their weddings. Uh huh. And I think it I'm says not that a fan in here, of that. I feel like it says that in here somewhere too. Is that like uh, I haven't gotten to it yet, but like that your best you to be to have a lesbian best friend, you must have dated or something like that. Yeah, I'm not as messy as that, but I think it might have been because I was straight for so long. Right. Your your dating history um, in the lesbianic world is less extensive. Yes. Than maybe someone who's yeah, and I'm like yeah, that's cool there, to be longer. on. Good terms with your ex. Like, always be on good terms with your ex if you can. I think that makes life easier. But I'm not going to say go be besties. Right. That's just, that can get a little sticky. And also, I don't want them at my wedding. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. <laughs> I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't That's want weird. that at all. No. So, it is true, but it's weird. It's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a lot to get to in this article. Sorry. Moving on. Go. <laughs> <laughs> this I feel like there's gonna be feelings about this one. There are two main lesbian tribes: cat lesbians and dog lesbians. <laughs> I haven't heard that, but it's true. <laughs> are there cat lesbians and dog lesbians, and no in between? Yes. yes, except do you get along? Do you know any cat lesbians? Yeah, I'm I know assuming, one. I know you're a dog lesbian. Yes, of I am. But Abby's been wanting a cat recently. <laughs> yeah, so I don't the know. We might couple. have two. Yeah, but uh, I guess her dog is like a cat. Uh So that makes sense. But yes, I do know a cat lesbian and it's true. I've, it's either cats or dogs. I don't think I know a single. Nary the two shall meet. Yeah. You can't move in together if one of you has a dog and a cat. Well, Uh, I mean, the saying goes like cats and like they fight like cats and dogs. Yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen when we get a cat. There's a dog and cats here. They don't fight. You're you're straight. That's the problem. (laughs) H&M has a lesbian corner where they keep all the plaid shirts and practical jumpers. I true? did not know that at all. I also have tried to stay, stray away from the plaid. It's going out. You see, you're a very fashionable um, lesbian. Thank you. Speaking of fashion, accidental twinning is real and it is dangerous. Accidental what? Twinning. Oh, yeah. Like you. Does that mean you and... We walk out wearing the exact same outfit all the time. All the time. People have asked Abby and I for twins because uh-huh. we dress so similar. Because you dress... Somewhere. And we're like, no, that you should look at our faces to see if we're twins. <laughs> yeah, when people see two people in the same outfit, they just assume twins. Yeah. Not that like we get are you guys sisters? Are you guys twins a lot? We started keeping a tally and we're like, no, and they always get very confused. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, no one's ever said that to me, uh, and your sister. No. Asked if we were twins. Yeah. So um, come on now. But we do often like 
dress the same, not on purpose. Yeah. But we're talking like jeans and the same color t-shirt yeah. or like a striped t-shirt and jeans, you know, like yeah. something. We also share a closet. Uh, oh yeah, you do. Do you sh- like actively yeah. share a closet? Yeah. Just and one ex- closet. The only thing that we don't share is shoes. Cause we have different shoe size, uh-huh. but everything else we share. Everything else is fair game. Everything that else is fair game. has to cause fights. No. No? No, because we're both so... Passive, aggressive? No. <laughs> we always want the other person to like like what they're wearing as well. So if it's like, oh, I had to, I had in mind I was going to wear that. We're like, oh my God, yeah, of course, go for it. Like, we're very, we're very nice about it. I'm like, well, then you have to help dress me. And then we dress each other. So it's kind of like fun. Yeah, it's dress up. It's play all the time. It's fun. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> what if you like, one of you like had, like, had it set in your mind? Like, I'm, well, I was going to wear that. Yeah. Tonight. And then the, the person was like, oh, go for it. No, oh, that's so nice. Yeah. That oh, we so we sweet. like each other. Yeah. <laughs> How big is the closet? It's pretty big. You can both fit in there? Yeah. It's a walk-in. Cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> period, yeah, the- <laughs> period sinking is a sign of true love. Um, well, I'm offended because we have not synced periods and it's been two and a half years. It's also very convenient. Um, it is convenient because that's. It, Moving yeah. on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Danny, uh, there's, no, I, there's nothing you could explain to me that I would ever <laughs> think. I'm sorry. Uh, dating women isn't any simpler than dating men. True or false. I think dating women is simpler. Well, no, no. I think men are more. S- it goes on to say. I think it depends on the person. It goes on to say, straight girl. I wish I were a lesbian. Things would be so much easier. And then lesbians, lol, lol. If you only knew. What does that mean? Like uh, relationships, is, uh, same sex, same gender. Like could be just as. Uh, no, um, people I can think, always be uh, jerks, right? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I think it depends on the people. Depends on the person. Depends on the person. Like you could date a really great, st- uh, like straight cis man, and you could also date a really great, uh, a really great lesbian. But also, or you could date a terrible lesbian. Like right. it depends on the person. I find that women are usually more understanding of uh, a woman's point of view. Okay. So like. Oh, that they totally makes sense. They understand what I'm yeah. going through or what I've gone through and stuff. And so that part's easier. I think guys are easier to like make happy. Mm. Like it's very simple. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be offensive. I've just noticed like with. No, I, it wasn't. Like, yeah. It wasn't an offended check. Yeah. It was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're simpler. <laughs> was like, yeah. But uh, your feelings are more like understood. I think dating a woman. Well, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, a lot of time in in um, in ha- maybe heterosexual relationships is just trying to understand the person's yeah point of view or you yeah. know how they. So yeah. I think that's the source of like a lot of strife in couples. A, a cis straight man isn't going to understand my life right, struggle. Yeah. They can listen and tr- and like sure get it that way. They'll never fully understand. Just like I will never understand what it's like to be you. Damn, yeah, man, we're getting, <laughs> a, we're getting really deep with these BuzzFeed I'm questions. Sorry. This, I, this is like There's, a, this is like sixth, sixth date stuff. Is this okay? Yeah. Are you comfortable with these? Oh, yeah. Can I keep going? I'm going to have to say thanks to our next sponsor, but then can I keep asking you yeah. these questions? And then I have some other fun things I'm an open to book. Uh, say, and we will eventually say our relaxes, I'm sure. All right. Sounds okay. good. We'll be right back. Hello, Fresh. Oh my, you guys know how much we love Hello Fresh. Do you not know what it is? First of all, have you been living under a rock? Second of all, I'm going to tell you about it. With Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. So it is full of flavor. We love it at our house. It's so much fun. It makes life a lot easier. Um, And HelloFresh right now is full of flavor. It is in full bloom. It is a wonderful time to be getting HelloFresh. They got wonderful spring recipes that are chef crafted, featuring ripe seasonal ingredients delivered right to your door. Spring is a great time to get started on HelloFresh, guys. They've got a lot of wonderful recipes for you. They do more than just delicious dinners, though. Not only can you take your pick from 40 weekly recipes, but you can choose from over 100 items to round out your order, from snacks and easy lunches to desserts and pantry necessities. Everything arrives in one box on a delivery day that you get to choose. And when the spring sunshine is calling your name, don't call for takeout. Hello. 
Get HelloFresh instead. Their quick and easy meals make feeding the family a cinch and without the high price tag. Their new fast and fresh options are ready in just 15 minutes or less. And no worries, by the way, if you're not a pro in the kitchen, HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. And check save money off of your growing to-do list this spring, guys. Because with the help of HelloFresh, HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. We love it. It it has saved us so much time, so much money, so much effort. And it's also really nice that it's just like dinner's planned out for you. And it's just there and you don't have to decide what you're making. It's like, here's a recipe, here's the ingredients, and you just whip it up real fast. It is saved us so much time so much energy and it's a nice activity for us to do together it's almost like date night whenever we get to do it together it's super fun go to hellofresh.com slash relax 16 and use code relax 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping that is hellofresh.com slash relax 16 use code relax 16 for 16 free meals plus shipping go check out america's number one meal kit today all right (laughs) There's more. I just got really uncomfortable with like a question coming up. I don't know. We'll see if I have can say it. Uh, but the next one is lesbians always reply to texts on time. Um, I texted you yesterday. You texted me back like within five minutes that you would come be on this well, podcast. Yeah, I'm really good. If someone's ask, asking me a direct favor, uh-huh. I respond right away and I'm for it. Like, yeah. But if, if someone's just like, Hey, thinking about you. I'm like, that's going to take a lot of emotional response for me to reply Mm -hmm. to that. So I don't. So I'm actually going to say when you're texting with other lesbians, though, or do they? Nah, it's the same. I'm I'm I'm, I I don't know. I think it depends if you have ADHD or not, because sometimes a text (laughs) can like to respond back to someone takes so much energy. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to say I don't agree with that one. These next questions are getting, I don't know. Sexual? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just going to ask this one. Okay. Lesbian sex and porn is all wrong. <laughs> 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 because it says here because um, it was they created. all have the longest nails imaginable or something. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> and then there's. One, that, that is usually made for the male gaze. So that's why it's I would usually ass- I would assume incorrect. so, yeah. Not that I would, I mean, from what I've accidentally <laughs> clicked maybe on. Maybe we should go to the next Whatever I've accidentally clicked on in the past, I, I just, just I oh, assumed it wasn't accurate. <laughs> I don't know what this podcast's line is. <laughs> Telling a guy you're a lesbian never makes them leave you alone. Have you ever been hit on by a gentleman? And, yeah. and you're like, oh, <laughs> sir, I am yes. I gay. Yeah. So, um, I dress more in in a mask sense. And so I usually don't get hit on by men. Um, especially if I'm standing next to to Abby, because she's usually the one that's going to get hit on, but I have been, I'm standing with Abby. We're at a bar and a guy walks past me and then comes back and says, Hey, you want to dance? And I said, no, I'm good, man. Thank you. And he goes, who are you here with? I said, my girlfriend. And he goes, okay, why can't you dance with me? I said, I'm here with my girlfriend. I'm not going to dance with you. And he was like, come on. I was like, dude, I said, I, no. Mean, he, maybe you thought, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't click in my brain that I had to say I'm a lesbian because in my brain, I was saying my girlfriend, but that term is used for like, Hey girlfriend. So that's what I was just utterly shocked that I was dressed like I dress. And mm-hmm. I was with a bunch of my, my friends who my female friends who were dressed very femme and i so i would think i was just very confused but that's the only time i've been well all right hit on by a dude and i i was just more confused as to why and then i tried to explain that i was here with my girlfriend but and then afterwards i was like oh he thought i meant like my friends i'm so like embarrassed on behalf of like other (laughs) guys well just because it's like um what's the word i'm looking for is as if like he deserved an explanation or like, Oh yeah. He was just or, being a pushy dude or, or some, I just, I just hate that that exists. Like I can honestly tell you, I don't think I've ever like asked a girl in a bar to dance. I, I don't, I'm not that I, it's hard for me to like, I, would ne- I mean in the past, you know, like, yeah. like publicly openly just, uh, and just cold, it like was, cold yeah. read, just go and, and hit on something. It's like, yeah. it's so bizarre to me that people are like that. 
And then like be like, why not? Yeah. Give me a re you owe me a reason. Yeah, it was very I'm it was so pushy. Fra- I'm so fragile. Yeah. That it just you know, like I it's it it's uh I, I apologize on behalf no, of my it's it embar- embarrassing. But I've noticed yeah, it doesn't deter dudes just saying that you're gay or whatever. Because Abby's had to be like, oh, I'm here with my girlfriend. Like, we're together. I'm here with my partner. She'll say I'm here with my partner. And it doesn't really do anything. They still talk to her. I mean, I can't blame think, them. Because they think like, oh, it can change or they can, they Or they can get in the middle of it. It's like, it's oh. not a, oh, she's taken. It's more of like, it's oh, this could be fun. Yeah. Ugh. But, and then they meet me and I'm like, hi. And I just stare at them and then they're like, oh. And then they walk away. <laughs> You were threatening them. You were physically well, threatening I've been them. told many times I give off uh, straight cis white man energy. You're bit, you could be like in, intimidating. I've seen you be intimidating in like um, crowd control scenarios. Yes. I know how to give off. I don't want you near me vibes. Yeah. Are you I, doing this? Is that what you're doing now? No. Is that what, oh, because you did like a. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, maybe you're just giving an example. But like I was like, oh, this girl's not. <laughs> Rituals. I said you got too close, bro. It says being, and then the last was being a lesbian is actually the best. Well, yeah, that one's facts. <sighs> oh, <yeah. laughs> All right, when you're on my podcast, I'll ask about being a straight man. Oh, God, um, I feel like I've learned so much. I'm glad. I'm comfortable with that conversation. Me too. I don't think that's that strange. No, I'm just talking about myself. We're cool like that. Yeah. We just like don't sit down and have like long, serious, deep no. conversations. No. There's always children running around. It's yes. Like there's things happening. There's yeah. other people. Like, have we ever hung out alone? I think literally just the one time I helped you move. And then. You helped me move. That was it. You, you, you haul lesbian <laughs> me to your sisters. <laughs> I actually did. Um, that was kind of you, Holly. <laughs> I feel like once we drove back from one of her shows together. When? And I drove back in your truck. Maybe. It's like yeah. a show near Disneyland. Remember? Maybe. I think I to say were... not remember. Do you have a better memory than me? I don't know. I it's it comes and goes. Okay. Uh, as yeah. I as I get more into dadding, it's I <laughs> can't think of words. I don't. You I'm just so exhausted. I haven't you don't slept sleep in like as much. Four and a half years. I haven't slept. It feels. What's oh cocoa melon? That's the word I was trying to look for the other day. I was calling him like chamomile something cocoa why were you looking for cocoa man i was uh because i was saying i don't have kids i don't understand stuff but then i did a kid thing and i said just call me cocoa melon but i couldn't think of the word cocoa melon and so i was like cantaloupe baby i couldn't remember i (laughs) cantaloupe baby would also probably work as a children's program if you just put old like royalty free uh nursery rhymes to random cartoons that literally don't even have to like correlate to the nursery rhyme I, and just yeah. put it on Netflix and you could get a baby to watch that for sure. Yeah. I mean, cantaloupe, I think that's a lucrative kid, business. Just say cantaloupe, melon? cantaloupe baby. And it's like just a cantaloupe with eyes on it that rolls yeah. around. There's just no feet. Straight up gave away a million dollar idea. Another thing I wanted you to do for me is that I have children. Yeah, I have, uh, I have, you have three. three of them. It took me a second. Uh, well, it's, it's sometimes I like choke on the number. <laughs> I got to say because it's, so, it's so it just happens so fast and it's so startling. Um, you went and, from one to three real quick. Yeah, and I've and I've had children um, for four and a half years, um, and I just kind of want to sit here and close my eyes and just have you. Describe to me a day <laughs> where, like, a, just a typical day of, like, what you know, what time what you wake I up, do. what you do. Um, right. Just, you know, getting to do things that you want when you want to do them. Like, you mm-hmm. can go to the bathroom. Um, I'm just going to close my eyes and just and listen to a person without kids talk about what a day is like without them. All right. So, um, I sleep about. Seven to nine hours. Oh my god! Without any interruptions, I don't wake up at all. Yeah. And then I wake up naturally between seven thirty oh. and eight a.m. Um, and then I do a little stretch. I grab my phone. I look to see if I have notifications. And then I get out of bed, brush my teeth, pee, take my dogs out to pee. Just yeah. So I go out in the morning, and then I come back inside. I start my coffee. I unload the dishwasher. <laughs> I feed, <laughs> I feed the dogs and then I sit on the couch for 45 minutes and Ugh. have coffee time where 
uh, I maybe scroll through some TikToks. Yeah. I play some phone games mm-hmm. uh, and I just I just drink my coffee for 45 minutes. Lately, I've been playing the piano a little bit <laughs> for fun. <laughs> And then uh, at nine, Abby comes out and makes me breakfast. And I usually go in my office and start editing. Because mm. uh, like you wanted to. Because I wanted to. Yeah. And then sometimes it depends on the day, but we'll go I'll either go rock climbing around 11 or we'll go on a hike. Because you could. Because I can. Uh-huh. Um, if we aren't, then I'll do a little workout mm-hmm. in my gym. And then Abby makes me lunch. That's sweet. And then I'll, I'll work a little more. And then it really just depends and on the just, day. you like, just eat the lunch? I eat the lunch. Like sitting down? And, oh, yeah. We <laughs> sit down and we all eat, uh, we, we eat lunch together. <laughs> we sit down and we eat. Sit, oh we sit down God. and eat and we have an un, 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 uninterrupted conversation. We're no one screaming. There's no, no babies. Or, we don't have to do anything. <laughs> they let you talk? Mm-hmm. The other adults let you talk? Yeah, the other adults let me talk. Oh. And then I, I, I wash. I always wash the dishes because she cooks the food. Mm-hmm. And then around five... I get a little bored of work, mm. so I go inside <laughs> and see what's up, and we either go out to eat just or... Just generally just walk around <laughs> seeing what's up? I just walk around and see what's up. Yeah, because you yeah. want to, and you can. I do whatever I want, and then um, recently we've been planning a bunch of trips, because we oh, can. What are the, I'm going what to New Zealand trips? next month. Yesterday we decided we're going to New Zealand next month. Or like like a vacation? Uh, yeah. Oh Georgia my God. was like, can you come to New Zealand? I said, sure. So, because I can. Are you bringing young children with you? No. Because you don't have them. I don't have them. Ah. So, Probably why you can go on that. Yeah, I'm going on a, going on Alaskan cruise in a week. Oh, yeah. No kids, and then I'm gonna come home for a couple weeks, and then go to New Zealand, mm. and then I come home, and then go to Disney World mm. with no kids, and then. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it'd be so much more efficient. <laughs> what? So yeah, the only thing I usually like my responsibilities are just I got some dogs I have to feed. Uh huh. That's it. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, like that's that was like some weird form of like uh, what is it a- 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 ASMR or something <laughs> for people with kids to just like imagine if you could do that if like you had an a- ASMR where you just talked about how you could do whatever you want all the time because you don't have kids and the only people that listen to it are people with kids. Like, yes. That are, oh, and then uh, at at nine we decide if we want to watch one more episode on the couch uh, of whatever we're watching or go to bed. And if we go to bed, well, what about if you see somebody in the monitor wake up crying? I don't have those. Oh. I have a furbo, but I only check that when I'm out of the house just mm. to make sure the dogs haven't broken anything. Yeah. But then I'll, I'll get in bed around like nine thirty or ten and, and read a couple <laughs> chapters of my book that I've decided to read that week. You mean you're not trying to cram your entire life into two hours no. at night after everybody else no, the nights falls are pretty, asleep at 10? They're pretty boring. The nights are pretty boring. Oh, our <laughs> lives are different, but I wouldn't trade. <laughs> I wouldn't trade because um, I love my kids mm-hmm. and sometimes they say really funny things yes. and they're super cute. You have a um, lot of children that are very young right now. Yeah. And then soon they will not be young. Yeah. I see lots of those sad TikToks yeah. where it's just like children's uh, toys on the ground and mm-hmm. like sad music and Aww. it makes us cry every time. Yeah. You know? I, yeah. You're in such a. Cause they, you know, it's, it just says it doesn't last forever. Yeah. It's a complicated um, time. Yeah. But our lives are very different. Yeah. And it is interesting uh, that how drastic that shift is when you have kids, how your life you, is completely not for yourself. Um, yeah. That's why I'm so. Anymore. I like. I like Certainly kids and I you, want like, them. Yeah, I'm not saying you're, you know, yeah. leave, lead some sort of like selfish or whatever, or like whatever no. life. Obviously not. But like you can do, I don't know what you want. Yeah. Well, I know having kids is like the most shift in your, your bit. You change as a human being. You have lots of uh, nephews and. Yeah, I got nine of them. A couple nieces. They're yeah. called nibblings. Did you know? Didn't, what? <laughs> Their nieces like gonna, and nephews are called nibblings. <laughs> I don't feel like that. It sounds like you're going to like eat them or something. <laughs> I'm not nibbling on them. them it's, it's not. It's literally just an ing that you're, you've changed. <laughs> I didn't do it. It's siblings. No, you just added an s. No, I added an n to siblings. Nibblings. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't get, I didn't get that. I'm not gonna eat them. Okay, good. <laughs> anyway, that's why I'm on the fence about kids. Like, I want them, but I also don't want to change my life because I love my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, yeah, well, you know, you're never ready and you never make that decision. Even when you're, and even when you are ready and you make that decision, you're still not ready. Correct. And that's also me. I, I can't think. go, whoopsie, I have to really plan it. Right. So it's even more pressure of like. That is interesting. Yeah. Cause I, tr- I, I totally feel like that you are never ready, but even if I know couples that have planned it and then once, once it took or whatever, um, we're like, we're not ready. You know what I mean? Oh, yes. Even after like intense 
uh, you know. Yeah. So you're never ready, but I think once maybe I get bored. <laughs> That's what happened to me. I was like, this is too dull. <laughs> Life's too easy. Yeah, Let's it's turn too it up easy. a notch. Um, we'll be right back. All right. Ooh, stamps.com. We love stamps.com here on the Relax Podcast. And oh, wow. I'm excited to talk about it today because you know who works hard shipping out stuff to people? Me. I often give away prizes, whether it be for fundraisers or just for fun. I like shipping stuff out to people, um, to you guys. Corey does it a lot too. Uh, you know, and just in our house in general, we're always shipping things to random people. And stamps.com has made that such a breeze. I feel like I always really dreaded having to go to the post office and stand in line and talk to people who sometimes maybe could get a little bit grumpy, a little testy there in the post office. Sometimes the, the tension is high. So to avoid that stress, to avoid, to avoid the lines there, um, stamps.com has been such a huge help. It's awesome. When every person, moment, and penny counts in your business, you can't afford to take any of them for granted. Stamps.com gets it because for like the last 25 years, they've been helping businesses just like yours to save time and money. So you can focus on your business knowing stamps.com has all your postage needs covered with premium discounts and great rates. With stamps.com, all you need is a computer and a printer. They even send you a free scale so you have everything you need to get started. And if you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your stamps.com dashboard. And if you sell products online, stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. And running a business obviously is not cheap. You have to invest so much of your time and your money and your efforts. And especially when it comes to fulfilling orders for your customers, that can be really time consuming. It can be really overwhelming and it can be really expensive. So luckily stamps.com has huge carrier discounts up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. Plus stamps.com automatically tells you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. And you know what else? For 25 years, stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Get access to the USPS and UPS services you need right from your computer anytime, day or night. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. Set your business up for success when you get started with stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code RELAX for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale, no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code relax it wouldn't be an episode of relax the podcast if i didn't ask you rachel ballinger who needs to relax this week um i personally think wireless chargers need to relax to they're not that cool absolutely agree with you 100 percent. but go on they're not cool and it's still a wire is involved I mean, they're not cool i mean like they're it's like trendy well, like people think that like they're really cool. Like Apple's like, we well, can wirelessly charge. Cars are like, you can wirelessly <laughs> charge. Like in the, have really? you seen that? No. I don't have this in my car, but like I've seen that in car ads, like in the center console, you just like, you can wirelessly charge your phone. Oh, the thing. in the car. Yeah. My car does that. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't Fancy. listen. Do you use it? Yeah, because it's a place to put my it phone. Works. Yeah, it works. Counterpoint. Okay. You've just been debated and lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the ones that are like for the next to your bed. Yeah, yeah. They're like wireless chargers because who wants to deal with a wire and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, well, there's still a wire. Me. You have to plug it in. Yeah, it's still technically wired to a wall. It's just it's in a different uh, orifice. And now you can't use your phone while charging it. No. And also it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah, because you have to like you come to up have, and down it a few times. If you have the Apple one. The mm-hmm. Apple charge, like on brand Apple. Yeah. And you have the Apple case that's like, this is the one that's good yeah. for the mag charging or whatever. Still doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. So I'm just saying that I think they need to relax because it's not that great. You can't, you don't want to go to an airport and I feel like it do charges that. slower. It does. It's bulkier to carry around. Yes. Like you said. And it's still plugged in. It's still plugged in. You're it's still dealing wireless. with the wire. The only true wireless one is actually in my car. Do they call it wireless? Yes, it's wireless but charging. there's a wire coming I'm out of it. I'm aware of that. That's why I'm so mad about it. And you can't use your phone while you do it. Because it's just like, because it's just as the Mormons would say, you're soaking your phone. It's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Phys- yeah. Yeah. It's not technically. Yeah. Full according on. According to, you know. The documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> And God. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's how I think needs to relax. They're fine. Like, I don't, I'm not mad about them. I just don't think they're as cool as everyone like wants them to be. 
I don't know anyone that has one and uses one. I don't know that many people. <laughs> like, okay, I know children under four and your sister, but <laughs> my children knowledge. under four and your sister don't use wireless chargers. I I get it for our, our watches, like how you have to put it on things so that it, they can be waterproof so you don't have to plug something in, but uh-huh. your phone still has holes in it. Right. Oh, what are they going to do next? Take away the hole? Oh, they're going to take away the hole. Oh, don't take that idea. Don't take Tim the Apple. holes away. Yeah. <laughs> Some Apple engineer I know is listening to be like, that's it. We take away the hole. We holes. take away the hole. Then they have to give wirelessly them up, charge. Give them up an update. Destroy their current phone. Yep. That's what's happening to me right now. I'm sorry. What needs to relax with you? Uh, when was the last time you used a water fountain? Um, for my dogs use them at parks, but oh. other than I don't use them myself. Uh, specifically, um, as an environmental conscious person, I have like a reusable water bottle. And yeah. there's the ones where you, uh, you put it under the thing. And it fills your water bottle and then it tells you like this water fountain has saved like a million plastic bottles from the ocean. Have you seen these? They have them no. in like gyms and airports Where? and things. What fancy water no, no, fountains are you air, using? This, it looks like a normal water fountain and then it has like the auto bottle refiller like above it that comes down. Oh, I've seen those at airports. Yeah, at airports. Okay. And, I like, thought you were they like have talking one, about like just at your neighborhood park. I was like, okay. No, they don't have those in like the streets. The, the streets. Where you're hanging. <laughs> um, this, like, they ha- I mean, I've seen them in airports. I have, they have them in my gym. Is kind of the extent. I can't really think of it. What other. gym are you going to, bro? It's just like a, just a regular. It's a not, gym? It's not a fancy one. It's just oh, like a, you know. All right. Just like every other gym. You I don't know. I guess I haven't been to a gym in a while. Scan, yeah. Yeah. I just started recently feeling comfortable enough to, to do Congrats. that. Um, but so I have this thing about those things to where it's like wherever they are, they the water tastes like where it is. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the one at the gym... If you refill your water bottle there, it tastes like, like water from the gym. No, it tastes like the gym. Oh, it's gym flavored water. I feel so that it tastes. Uh, yeah, it's it's undrinkable. Yes. So you might as well just I might as well throw my, you know, reusable water bottle into <laughs> the ocean at a turtle because like I can't drink this water. <laughs> I can't drink this water now because it tastes like um, if you go to like a machine and you can see like the sweat outline of oh, someone's yes. ass crack after they just got up oh it's the worst it's like they bottle that they, yeah that's um, the flavoring for a cause uh and the same <laughs> with the airport it tastes like the air it, it has the, it's mm-hmm. essence yes and not in like a yeah you're there and you're, it's like it tastes like it yes it's not that it's not a there's no se- other sense that's involved here i'm not talking about like smell or whatever like it the water yeah. tastes like where it came from yeah you know, I'm in water fountains. Yeah. And I haven't drank, like, I don't drink from regular water fountains. I don't feel, I don't really, it hasn't been my thing. I think since like I, sixth grade, I think was the last time. I don't, I've never liked the flavor of water out of a water fountain. Mainly, I grew up in Southern California. You're not allowed to drink our tap water. Yeah, that was interesting to me. That was never a thing for me. Yeah. Growing up. Yeah, you lived on the People East Coast. just drink tap. But when you're in a restaurant and they say tap or, or tap still are sparkling. Sounds well, like you're at a lot of fancy restaurants, Rachel. <laughs> Like, what do you, you, you said that. I know not you drink, me. I know you drink. See, I do know you because I know you drink sparkling water now. I do like sparkling water. But if you drink, you know why I like sparkling water is because I gave up soda and uh, water tastes disgusting to me. I hate the taste of water, so I had to put any some sp- water, not just just water. Like you can give me. So a, imagine it tasting like the gym. It's like double. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah water is worse. Yeah. So I had to put some bubbles in it for me to be okay drinking it. Do you own like a soda stream or something? I do. Wow. Well, do you use it? Yeah. That's my main source of water. There's one of those in the back of like a pantry here somewhere. <laughs> it's hard because you have to get this uh, things the, to refill it. Yeah. This, like the CO2. I don't things have kids, so I can just. You just order I things. I just on do phone. things. Yeah. And then. Um, <laughs> but if you, but when you were young, when you were younger, right. Mm-hmm. And they said like, is tap okay? Would you, you wouldn't, couldn't say tap okay? Like here, I would say, do they do I that would, here? I would say tap's okay because they put region? ice cubes on it in it and that makes it colder and it like freezes the Kills flavor the germs. it well it neutralizes the flavor the chlorine or whatever yeah so but isn't the ice like say like isn't the ice like in people's fridges that like their fridge makes ice is that tap water or is that filtered i don't know that it's like is a whatever it's tap it's whatever comes out of your your sink it doesn't water. go through a filter um oh actually actually i don't know i'm not going to speak on this because i don't know but uh, if you work on, if you know a lot about fridges, <laughs> I know. Uh, leave a comment. Like maybe it depends. Maybe it depends the, on your brand of fridge. Maybe some fridges are like, yeah, we filter the ice, of course. Well, I know that the water out of a fridge is filtered because I replaced that, but I don't know if that water goes to the ice maker. 
Okay. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. Well, that's kind of why we asked you, asked you to be on the podcast. Was, oh, it's because of my engineering, engineering degree? Expertise. Um, I think this has been great. I've had I've fun. Had, I literally had so much fun. Oh, I'm it was good. I mean, it was like a little bit awkward at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was moments, but any first date's going to have that. Yeah, and and we eased into it. Yeah, I think we're going to get a second date out of this. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so excited. Um, now, before you leave, though, you're on Relax Podcast, and if you listen, which I'm sure you do, you know that me and Colleen love sports. Uh, we yes. usually spend this hour talking about sports. Yeah. And so I... I mean, she's a, she's a diehard I, sports fan. Right. I don't know how long this is going to take. What, are we going to shoot the I'm basket? I'm not going to let you leave. Until you make a behind the back okay. basket. I mean, I know hoop. Colleen does this every time. Colleen does this every episode and she always makes it first or second try. Yeah. So let's see if you can be, uh, be her. All right. I'm ready. Thanks so much for being here, Rachel Ballinger. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Eric Stocklin. Come on. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> we can cut that and make it look like first try. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.